Welcome to the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Nigeria has been placed uh, third and ranked the third worst place for workers to be laid off in the world. Uh, Nigeria ranked third worst country with a 1.19 over 10 layoff score behind some countries like Puerto Rico and the United States of America. We look at the unemployment situation in the country and what workers who are laid off have to go through when they lose their jobs. The Nigerian government uh, on Monday said the incessant uh, conflicts between farmers and herders in the sub-Saharan African region was threatening food security in Nigeria. What exactly is going on and how can this situation be tackled? We'll discuss farmer herder crisis on the program this morning. And of course, we have a usual look at today's newspaper headlines and of the press. I guess Opuna Boinko Tara joins us on the program to discuss and analyze the top stories. You're welcome back. Uh, it's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa for another day. We bring you fantastic and interesting conversations and, of course, analysis right here on the program. We apologize for coming your way behind shadow. My name is Kofi Bartels, and uh, let's quickly start with a, a top trending segment looking at some of the stories in the social space that we will bring to you this morning. Uh, three of them, and, of course, a very interesting ones at that. The first one uh, has to do... Uh, with uh, Benue State and, of course, rather with the Federal Safety Commission, rather, on the Niger Bridge, um, uh, saying that tra trucks and trailers are not allowed. Um, and they're also asking for the support of motorists. Don't forget, some days ago, uh, we informed you that the Federal Safety Corps had issued some guidelines uh, as regards the second Niger Bridge, which was uh, be being open to motorists moving from uh, west to east in the country. Um, in the Yuletide, you know, there's a lot of traffic from different parts of the countries to the east uh, in the Yuletide and vice versa um, just uh, for the, the Christmas and New Year festivities. And of course, uh, the federal government and the federal minister of works have said they were going to open, uh, make the second Niger Bridge accessible to motorists um, for that reason. This is a, a bridge, a project that has been much awaited, uh, especially by residents, Nigerians who live in the southeastern part of the country. Uh, it's been decades in the making. It's been a promise. It's been a mouth in the mouth of politicians, and it's finally become reality uh, in the time of President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, so this time, they can go home. Our brothers and sisters who are moving to the southeastern part of the country can use this second Niger bridge before us go home. I don't know if it's a campaign strategy. <laughs> because, I mean, if they use the bridge, they might be able to say, okay, maybe we should um, <clears throat> give the Progressive Congress a second chance. I don't know. I don't know. But what the FRC had said was that heavy-duty trucks and trailers were not going to be allowed on that bridge for obvious reasons, of course and that they could use the old, the original route, which is the old bridge, the first one, to get to where they want to go to. Well, the latest is that the Federal Road Safety Corps um, Delta Command uh, has urged motorists to cooperate with all traffic managers uh, to ensure free flow of traffic during the Yuletide, uh, is what they're saying. Um, the, the movement from, the, from, east, or from west to east, if you're using that uh, bridge, Indeed, the first Niger Bridge is you would have to go through Delta State to access uh, Anambra State. So from Asaba to um, uh, Onicha uh, is, is, is what we're talking about. So as the opening, uh, that second Niger Bridge, you want motorists to cooperate with traffic managers. Um, Basi Eshie is the sector commander. Uh, he said this yesterday in a statement that the FRC would collaborate with the relevant agencies to avert the usual gridlock along uh, the Niger Bridge, is what they're saying, uh, so that things will flow uh, smoothly and quickly without any hindrance, without any encumbrance, without any sort of um, hiccup, uh, is what they are talking about. All right, so, um, Babatuni Raji Fashola, the Minister of Works, has uh, announced, he's given the marching order, will allow you use this bridge uh, uh, as you're going home for the the Christmas and New Year. Uh, and now the FRC has also swung into action to say, um, this is how we're going to do it. 
all right, this is how we're going to do it. Um, you have to cooperate with the traffic managers on your way uh, home. So I think it's, it's that's that. Um, there's nothing more to add there. I mean, people who see the you know, increased um, presence of security operatives on that, on that uh, bridge should not be, I think, uh, worried. They shouldn't be perturbed and just realize that they just want to help them uh, have a free and smooth flow of traffic. I like, I like the, um, the, 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 the style, okay, and I like the fact that the FRC is already on top of this. Um, so this is what they're saying, that from December 15, the second Niger Bridge will be open to vehicles coming from west to east through Asaba, okay, from December 15, which is what? Today. Ah, my God. Then, from 2nd January 2023, only vehicles coming from the east, okay, to the west, will be allowed to use the second Niger Bridge. Um, in, in Nigeria, we, we call it one way. We call it one way, you know, we call it one way. So it's uh, going to be a one way arra arrangement for those who are wondering. So if you're moving from east to west, please be informed that you uh, will have to use the old route. And if you're moving from west to east, you can use the old route and then the new bridge as well. I do not know the thinking behind this, but I guess it's maybe to uh, reduce the, the load on, of, on the bridge, you know, for vehicles on the bridge per time. Maybe they're not yet at the point where they can allow the load, maybe because of the construction shadow. So maybe it's to allow, um, <clears throat> reduce the load. But one would have thought <coughs> if, excuse me, this bridge wasn't ready, in order to, um, to avert any issues with the lifespan of the bridge, uh, they would just not allow people to use it yet until they're fully ready to open it up to the public. Because I'm seeing here um, some sort of uh, maybe compromise. I'm sure maybe the engineers, the, you know, the construction company and all that would have said, well, see, we can't allow uh, you know, traffic on this bridge just yet. Um, we won't allow a lot because if you bring too much you know, on top of the bridge, a lot of weight it might affect the stability of the bridge. We are not yet on shadow. We have a timetable. You know, construction is very delicate. You know, it's construction is very delicate. So um, sometimes you, you can't do, you know, things ahead of time. You have to be on time. Uh, that's why if you're constructing a building, you have to do soil tests and all that. Uh, I hope that this is not a rushed, uh, like I said earlier, uh, move uh, as a campaign <laughs> ahead of next year's election to um, to soften the hearts of our brothers and sisters who are from the southeastern part of the country towards the current uh, federal uh, the ruling party, rather the All Progressives Congress. I hope, I hope, because I mean, if the bridge is not ready, just let them use the old. We've been using it for how many years now? Since independence, right? Or since it was uh, constructed? So, if it's not ready, if, the, if time is not yet here for cars to go on that bridge, then, you know, don't, don't rush it because we don't want to hear maybe 10 years down the line that they have issues because they use the bridge too early. All right. So I, I just hope, I just hope that this is not going to backfire. Uh, no. So from today, uh, those moving from east, from west to east can use the bridge, you know, and then from uh, the 2nd of January, it's going to be open to only those going from east to west. All right, so the FRS is informing members of the public, you know, again, reminding them that uh, heavy-duty trucks will not be allowed to use the new bridge. So you have to go to what we call Onicha Head Bridge. No, no, that's the Onicha Head Bridge. The old Niger Bridge, sorry, uh, is what they're saying. Uh, all right, so that, that's that. Um, like I said, I hope that it's not, uh, this is not, uh, what do you call it again, uh, uh, premature. Okay, it's not uh, too early. Um, the latest video of um, massive stash of, of Naira notes, which is, uh, you know, is making rounds on, on the internet, social media, viral video. You know, since the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria announced a cash withdrawal limit, so in fact, since the Central Bank of Nigeria uh, introduced and launched a new Naira notes uh, and gave a deadline for Nigerians to, to change the new Naira notes, uh, <laughs> we've been seeing videos of... Uh, of money everywhere, you know, uh, rotten 1,000 naira notes, uh, damp 1,000 naira notes, and all that. 
uh, people are taking them out of their suck away septic tanks you know out of their rooms and all that and then of course when the cash withdrawal limit came uh, into was announced it became worse for for those who had a stash of cash at home you know uh, anyway so this new video, you can see pictures there. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Nigeria's anti-corruption watchdog, has had to come out to, to debunk, uh, uh, or to clarify things, you know, to do a, uh, you know, uh, to clarify things and to debunk this, this video. Um, this is the EFCC, uh, and of course, the, uh, the Nigeria Police Force as well, Benue State Command. Um, what they're saying, is that um, the video showing, you know, alleged discovery of old diary notes in the capital city of Benue State is not true, all right? The video showing uh, alleged discovery of um, Nara notes in the capital city of Benue State, Makodi, is not true. We have that video, so we're going to play it to you so you understand what we're talking about, and then we'll come back on the other side. <laughs> I mean, I must confess that also, um, um, when I saw it, I, I, I said, wow, it looks, it looked like that was what, I mean, that, that we're talking about. But surprisingly, the, uh, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission is saying it's not true, and they've come out to, to debunk this viral video, despite what we're seeing in front of us. Um, like we said, the video shows, you know, uh, it seems to be 1,000 error notes discovered in, uh, you know, large... Um, sacks inside a container and people trying to you know take it out and all that uh, the container was said to be around what data market uh, in Benway State um, but an official according to the reports uh, an official of the anti graft agency who did not want to be mentioned um, since he was not authorized to speak uh, on this said the office got information uh, of all sacks of Naira notes and deployed its men uh, to the place, but discovered that they were condemned notes from the Central Bank of Nigeria. All right, condemned notes from the Central Bank of Nigeria. This is what it says. Quote, it is true we had information of all Naira notes. Uh, then we went to the court to obtain the search warrant. On getting there, we found those were condemned Naira notes. Uh, the owner of the old Naira notes said he bought them from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, these old nine notes have been cut into pieces and squeezed. Uh, it is not money at all. Uh, he says, I'll send you the pictures of the content in the sacks that were discovered for you to see. Uh, he told a reporter with the Punch newspaper. All right. And then, of course, like we said, the Better State Police Command also came out to say something about this. Uh, spokesman of the command is Catherine Anene. Um, she says that the... Uh, in a statement on December 13, 2022, at about 12 p.m., information was received at a police division, uh, Makodi, uh, that hidden diary notes were discovered from police barracks for data. Police detectives sent on investigation to the scene recovered waste papers in a shop close to Wadata police barracks. Uh, Makodi, the owner of the shop, you know, was invited for questioning. He tendered a license issued to him by the CBN for waste management. And he added that these wasted papers were usually gotten from CBN and processed into mosquito repellents. Uh, investigation has been extended to CBN for confirmation. All right, so that's what we're waiting for, uh, that confirmation from the CBN. You know, so um, I think uh, we, can, we can, you know, uh, tell ourselves that, uh, we need to remind ourselves that uh, <laughs> some of these things that we see on, on social media, we have to look for a way to clarify, you know, we have to look for a way to ask Questions. Even I, you know, who is really very uh, critical, I'm always uh, circumspect about these things. I, I I fell for it, you know, and um, I actually thought it was it was true, uh, only to discover that uh, from the reports that it's not it's not what it seems it seems to be. Um, so so that's that. You know, we we're looking for what to talk about. <laughs> we want the latest uh, gist. 
So it's very important, even for those who are filming, you know, to clarify, to clarify, to clarify, to clarify, to be sure about what you're putting online. But then again, no matter what we say, people will still put stuff online because they will not clarify. So I think the onus is on you, the final consumer, you and I, to, to ask questions, you know, to probe, uh, to, to look at the, the signs so that we are not deceived uh, by fake news. So we'll leave it at that. But I think kudos must go to The Punch and other media outfits who reached out to the EFCC for clarification before rushing to press. You know, some people will just take this and put it on their, uh, on their handles, maybe, for instance, Twitter. And because it's a news organization that puts it out on Twitter, people say, okay, it's true. Because I mean, you, can, you can see it there. It looks like money. But the, the, the punch reached out to the FCC first, which is what every media organization should do uh, before putting it out. I think that is, that is a good one. Okay, quick one. Uh, very quickly, President Buhari says that, uh, you know, uh, he has done his best for Nigeria, you know, uh, he has done his best. Uh, Nigeria is facing many challenges, so uh, he has done what he can do. Um, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think, uh, uh, I mean, I think it's, 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 it's easy to agree that uh, the president has indeed done his best. Yes. Well, the president uh, says that Nigeria's size and population, you know, are contributory factors in, you know, many of the challenges that the country is facing today. Uh, but in many areas, you know, of national endeavor, in many sectors of the nation's life, his administration is trying. His administration is trying, you know. And um, he had some good words for Nigerian youth. I think it's uh, it should be on record that the president has changed his view on Nigerian youth from lazy Nigerian youth. It's now promising uh, Nigerian youth, promising Nigerian youth. He said the youth are Nigeria's promise for a better future and solving their problems is the priority of his government. All right, the president's uh, spokesman, uh, Gar Shehu, in a statement on Tuesday said Nigerian leader stated this while welcoming the Secretary General uh, of the Abu Dhabi Forum, Sheikh Al Mafdu bin Baya, uh, and his deputy, Pastor Bob Roberts of the U.S., who visited him in Washington, United States, where he is uh, uh, currently. Okay, so he says that, um, you know, his administration is trying, uh, his administration has done their best, and that uh, the youth hold the promise for a better future for the country. I don't know if you're reading between the lines uh, to see where the president is coming from. He says, we're big in size, we're big in population, uh, we're facing many challenges, but in many areas we are trying. In seven and a half years as president, in seven and a half years as president, I have done my best. The only thing I can say uh, is that, yes, indeed, Mr. President, you have done your best. That's all I would say for now. <laughs> we'll take a break, and uh, when we come back, we'll look at what the papers have to say. Please stay with us. <laughs> 